In this edition of Vinyl Hall, I'll be going through nine recent purchases, some new releases, a few oldies, and yes, there will be metal. Lots of metal. So stay tuned. First up is the latest EP from American death metal band Creeping Death. This is The Edge of Existence, released in 2021 by E1. Of course, you might know this band. I did review their full-length album before this in a previous vinyl haul. I definitely wanted to get the EP as well. Uh, it's minor hardcore influences, but largely aggressive death metal. Uh, they tend to lean more into the death metal a little bit. Also, there are three new tracks on here on the A side, but the B side has re-records of older tracks. Uh, these tracks were originally on their 2016 EP called Sacrament of Death, but again, these are re-records. So we're seeing some new and some old, basically a uh, thing we see a lot on EPs these days. Uh, EPs tend to be a bit of a hodgepodge of demo or new or re-records or things like that. So pretty cool. Vinyl variant for this one is Evergreen and Coke Bottle Color in Color, limited to 500 copies. Also comes with a printed inner sleeve, picture of the band, their logo, which you can actually read, which is nice. In the reverse, you have lyrics and some credits here. Favorites on the album, or the EP, Relics from the Past, from the New Song side. On the re-records, I definitely like Doused in Flames, and I especially love Skinned Alive. Probably my very favorite song in this EP. There is a music video for The Edge of Existence. If you want to check that out, there's also a visualizer video for Humanity Transcends. Those are found at the Creeping Death YouTube channel. By the way, it's dedicated to Riley Gale and Wade Allison. Riley Gale, of course, lead singer of Power Trip. And Wade Allison, who's from Iron Age. Sad to see people go. Of course. So some clear homages to old school death metal. Uh, obituary certainly comes to mind. Definitely have some fantastic up-tempo riffing on this and some meaty hooks. If you like the last album, you're going to like this EP. Hell, that's why I bought it. Check it out. Next is the latest EP from Swedish metal band Lethal Steel. This is Running From The Dawn, released in 2020 by High Roller Records. So right away, you're getting an old-school heavy metal vibe off this record, uh, with some occasional nods to Iron Maiden. A little bit of Judas Priest, but mostly I'm hearing the Maiden. Uh, some cool soloing going on here, a very modern approach to soloing, uh, which definitely separates this from a lot of the other retro metal going on these days. Uh, most of those bands try to duplicate the past. These guys try to build on it a little bit. Um, I won't overstate that. I would just say a little bit. Also, you get a lot of fast-paced riffing on here. There's some cool vocal harmonies and the choruses. Pretty cool. Vinyl variant for this one is Red Blood. Basically transparent red with the logo and the track listings there. You can see it on both sides of the vinyl. Also comes with the typical High Roller Records promo of records that they have. They have a lot of records. I don't know if you know that about High Roller. Pretty cool. Also comes with an insert with lyrics and a nice picture of the band in front of a church because you know they're good Christian boys. Or not. Also, some favorites on this one. Stay Away is a really good track, but I really love City of Sin. It's the final song on the EP. Really killer track. Lethal Steel also has an LP before this. Came out in 2018 called Legion of the Night. I haven't heard it yet, but hearing this EP, I'm pretty motivated to hear that LP. Uh, if you've heard it, you should let me know in the comments what you think of it and how it compares to the EP, because I'm pretty interested at this point. So while this might not be the most unique collection of tracks, it definitely has the feel of classic metal, especially the Nawabum era. It definitely delivers on some fist-pumping tracks, so check it out. Next up is a compilation album from British metal legends Judas Priest. This is Reflections, 50 Heavy Metal Years of Music, released in 2021 by Sony Music. Right away, I want to point out the spot varnish of the logo and the name of the album in black. Very cool. I love that spot varnish thing. I don't know why. It's just fun. Got a gatefold with this one. Pictures of the band, all of the members, roughly all the members. I don't see Dave Holland there, but I'm not curious as to why that is. 
definitely cool shots of the band. Also, we've got track listings back here. Should point out the tracks. Uh, there are six studio tracks and the rest are live songs. Uh, the six studio tracks are interesting. It's a very strange collection of deep cuts. Not the typical hits that you get from this band. Uh, Let Us Pray, Call for the Priest, You Don't Have to Be Old to Be Wise, Fever, Eat Me Alive, All Guns Blazing, and Never the Heroes. Never the Heroes might be the least deep cut on here, but it's a pretty interesting selection of tracks. Maybe because there have been other Judas Priest comps out there with the bigger songs, so maybe they decided to throw these in. For the fans, of course, I'm one of them, so I kind of dig it. Live tracks take up the rest of this two LP set. Uh, some great stuff here. Running Wild, I love the version here of that. Uh, Beyond the Realms of Death, probably one of my very favorite Judas Priest songs. Studio or Live, I love hearing that song a lot. And the version on here is great. It ends with Sinner, live version of Sinner. Love that song. It's a classic Priest track. Can't go wrong with it. Other great stuff on here too. Distant Aggressor, Out in the Cold. Uh, the Ripper, Bloodstone, Green Man Alishi, Victim of Changes, and it just goes on. Good stuff. Vinyl variant for this one is 2LP 180 gram opaque red. Nice labels to match the record. Uh, there is a, a box set variant of this title. You might already know about that. It is very expensive, but it also has every single Judas Priest album in it, including the Ripper Owens era stuff on CD, plus some other bonus material and some extras. Pretty cool box. I kind of wonder if this title is actually released more for the fan who can't afford that box set or as a teaser to make you go one day. I want the box set because I want more. I don't know which it is. Uh, for me, I love this. I'd rather have this. I don't want to spend the $500 largely on albums I already have because I have just about every Judas Priest album, except for the Ripper Owens era stuff. For the most part, I don't have that. But yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this. Anyways, Judas Priest here with their new compilation. You should definitely check it out. Classic Priest. Next is the second album from American speed metal band CX. This is To the Grave, self released in 2014. So, this is a rather odd little entry in the CX catalog. Um, it definitely has more of a punkier feel to it, um, but also there is a different vocalist here, um, and he's unique to this second album. Uh, it's Steve Ace Hammer. I don't know much about him other than being in this band. His vocals are so so. Uh, not a total loss, but of course, he doesn't really compare to the other singer, who I'm going to talk about momentarily. But yeah, that's kind of the thing about this record. The vinyl variant for this one is Classic Black. Purported to be limited to 250 copies, but there are no real numbers on this, so it's hard to say. I mean, it could have gotten repressed, and just not saying that, but I don't know. Definitely have some favorites on here. Lamentation of Their Women is a great song. Also, Maniac. And I especially love the ending track, Drink, Fucking Die. Great track. I would heavily recommend that one from this album. Uh, they still do it live, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, interesting stuff. So a number of folks out there have already said this quite a few times, and I pretty much alluded to it as well, but CX has really evolved after this album. I think in no small part to the return of vocalist Carmine Blades. He's on the first album. He's on the two albums after this. Carmine's punch and delivery is just head and shoulders above this guy, um, and it's pretty obvious. I think fans were really wanting Carmine back. And once he was back, I think the band was invigorated, or reinvigorated rather, and songwriting got better and all of that. I mean, this is a decent little record for what it is, but there are better CX records. So just so you know that, going into this, I think if you're a hardcore CX fan, you should probably own it, maybe to be a completist. And there are some good tracks on here too. I did have a few favorites, but again, later albums are better. You should know that. Next up is the 2018 reissue of the original 2014 release from American black and speed metal band Midnight. This is No Mercy for Mayhem, released by Hell's Headbangers. Midnight, of course, is the brainchild of Athenar. This is a one-man band. He plays everything on these Midnight albums. Uh, I definitely want to compare this to the first album, Satanic Royalty, because there are some similarities. Uh, There's definitely the same kind of noisy production going on. I think it gives Midnight some of its charm. There's also a bit of Motorhead worship going on. I think that's kind of undeniable, especially in the earliest material. Also, the title of the album is a clear allusion to Venom, uh, a tribute to Venom, if you will. Venom has an instrumental on their debut album, Welcome to Hell, called Mayhem with Mercy. 
this is no mercy for mayhem. It's pretty obvious. Also, there is a little bit of Venom worship in Midnight. That's undeniable, too, especially in the early material. Also, I think there might be more mid-paced material on this record than on a lot of other Midnight albums. It seems that way. Uh, I definitely think that's in no small part to some of the Motorhead influence going on. And I actually think it gives the record quite a bit of variety. I think this kind of music needs some variety, some change-ups every once in a while, especially in the pacing. So, yeah, there it is. Vinyl variant for this one is Ultra Clear with Heavy Splatter. Multicolored Heavy Splatter. Limited 800 copies. The nice little logo there. Also comes with an insert with some lyrics. I am holding that upright. That would be upside down. And also, nice little picture on the back. Speaking of this pairing, we do have a poster. A full poster here. Right there. That's a nice poster, right? If I was 14 years old, I would totally hang this above my bed. And my grandmother would come in and freak out. Because I don't think she'd like Midnight. In fact, I know she wouldn't like Midnight. So favorites on this album? I've got a few. Definitely Evil Like a Knife. That's definitely my favorite song. Also No Mercy for Mayhem. Love that one. And Degregation. Also a killer track. So a nice 36 minutes of well-crafted and occasionally catchy songs. Also all that grit and fury you've come to expect from them. From him. Whatever. Anyways, definitely check this out. You know what, though? You should check this out with your grandmother. Bring her over. Say, hey, Granny, let's listen to some tunes and she'll be all excited to hear the mayhem and the mercy and the midnight. Sure. Next is the second solo album from American guitar shredder David T. Chastain. This is Within the Heat, released in 1989 by RC Records. So, unlike David's band, self-titled band, simply known as Chastain, this is an instrumental album. It also concentrates heavily on his guitar work, but it's not noodling for its own sake. There are actual songs here, which is quite refreshing when you think of other Guitar Shredder albums that are simply just excuses to do a lot of this. Not so much here. Also a nice variety of tempos and guitar styles on this record, as opposed to a lot of other Shredder albums, I guess I'm going to say that again, who basically keep everything at the same pace or the same speed. This is very different than that. Also, Chastain has more of a, an aggressive guitar attack than a lot of those other guys. I would definitely rather hear this album than anything by Steve Vai or Joe Satriani any day of the week, hands down. Speaking of styles, we get some hard rock and some prog and some boogie and some neoclassical. But all of it has this solid metal foundation. It is a metal album, and I think that's one of the reasons why I can dig the variety on it, because it definitely stays in that camp that I really like and want to hear Chastain in anyways. It's what he does best. Vinyl variant for this one is Classic Black. Of course it is. There's those RC labels there for you. Definitely have some favorites on here. Um, Excursions into Reality, the opening track is pretty great. Also, The Visionary. It's Still in Your Eyes is a pretty cool track. And In Your Face is probably my very favorite song. I would start with In Your Face. Absolutely. So this was actually a blind buy for me. I was record shopping outside of Worcester, Mass. This is when I went to the Raven show that you might know about. Uh, I took a chance on this because I like the band Chastain quite a bit. In fact, I covered them on an episode of the Vinyl Reacquisition Project. It's one of my shows. You should check out that playlist. Do a search through it and find the Chastain album I talked about. I figured I'd like the band. I might like his solo stuff. So I got this record. Definitely not disappointed. Want to hear more of these. Definitely. Next up is the latest EP from American metal band Spirit Adrift. This is Forge Your Future, released in 2021 by Century Media Records. Now, of course, this was originally supposed to be a side project of ex-Gatecreeper guitarist Nate Garrett. Uh, since then, he's brought other people in, not many. Uh, Marcus Bryant is here on the drums, and I believe it's his brother Preston who's doing synth on this. Uh, there is introduction of synth going on here. It doesn't overwhelm this record. It's still a metal record, so don't worry. So earlier material from this band had them more in a sort of doom metal flavor, but starting with the previous LP, they've moved some traditional metal into their core sound. Definitely hearing a bit of Dio influence throughout. Also, some of the twin soloing reminds me of Judas Priest. We've got some prog shifts occasionally, and also some Nawabum flavoring going on. 
Vinyl variant for this one is 180 gram orange vinyl. Um, all the tracks are on the A side. Uh, the B side has an etching, which is really hard to see. But trust me, it's cool. Of the three tracks on this EP, Invisible Enemy is my favorite. It closes out the EP. There is a music video for Wake Up, and there is a lyric video for Forge Your Future. So check all that out at the official Century Media YouTube channel. Also comes with an insert. Get this cool artwork. Really love the artwork on these Spirit of Drift albums. Every one of them. Very cool. Also, full lyrics and credits and all of that. And there's a CD included with the record as well. It's Century Media. They do that occasionally. So this is definitely trad metal spiced up with some more modern musical sensibilities. It also still has a little bit of that doom metal element that they're known for. I like the direction they're going in. I hope this is a sign of things to come because I definitely dig this EP. You should too. Next is the debut album from American fantasy metal band, Throne of Iron. This is Adventure One, released in 2020 by No Remorse Records. And as the title implies, this is fantasy metal. They're into the Dungeons and Dragons quite a bit. In fact, there are two spoken word bits on this album that are basically game banter. After you've had a few beers, apparently. Kind of fun, shows a humorous side to this band. There's a bit of that on this record. Likely the most obvious influence here, musically speaking, is Manila Road, though while listening to this, I can also hear that they'd be in pretty decent company with more modern acts such as Eternal Champion and Visigoth. In fact, I can see this band opening for those bands. And I would totally go see that show. Great stuff. So the vocals here are serviceable. They're not amazing, but they do the job they're supposed to do. This also does sound like it was recorded in a cave, but maybe that'll add some charm to the, the mix for you. Definitely low production. Um, however, to be fair, the riffs on this are actually pretty catchy. Not complex, but definitely catchy. And it does keep this album pretty interesting. Vinyl variant for this one is Classic Black. And why not? Great labels. There. Also, we've got an insert with full lyrics and picture of the band and some credits. As for favorites, I definitely have one for Dark Shrine of Rituals, great song, also Lich Spire, and Fourth Battle of the Ash Plains. The album does end with an instrumental, it's called Wish. It sounds a little bit like an 8-bit computer game ending. Fits the theme of the fantasy game, role-playing game whatever theme to it kind of dig that there's a music video on here for the track lich spire i would check that out at the nowatham full albums youtube channel that's n-w-o-t-h-m stands for the new wave of traditional heavy metal great little channel by the way you should give them a sub uh they showcase a lot of up and coming trad metal acts of modern note show a lot of music videos but you get full albums as obviously Nowatham full albums is the name of the channel that's what you're going to get you should definitely check that channel out you'll hear bands like this and a whole lot of others bit of a plug for them so although the album has a lot of heart and a lot of great tracks it still lacks the bigger delivery coming from those bands that i mentioned before eternal champion and visigoth again come to mind but I think they've got it in them to be a much stronger band. I think the songwriting is certainly there, so I would like to see that happen. But don't get me wrong, this is a very listenable album. I'm still going to spin this one. I'm still enjoying it. Next up is the seventh studio album from Swedish hard rock band Crazy Licks. This is Street Lethal, released in 2021 by Frontiers Records. So full disclosure here, Crazy Licks is a bit of a hair metal band, a hair metal revival band, than anything heavier than that. Also with this record, there's a bit of an AOR sheen going on to the production, so know that going in. Crazy Licks, of course, came out of the late aughts and early 2010s. It was a big push in Sweden for a revival of hair metal. Um, it happened with a lot of European countries. Sweden seems to be the epicenter of it. You remember a lot of bands like uh, Santa Cruz and Hardcore Superstar and Crash Diet. There are a bunch of these bands. Some of them have fallen by the wayside, but cr uh, Crazy Licks has definitely hung on there. I mean, they got seven albums out, so that's pretty cool. Of course, I gotta say, the tracks do manage to rock pretty hard. Uh, some great riffs, and of course, the spectacular vocals of Danny Rexon. This band would definitely fit in with a lot of the MTV bands of the late 80s and the early 90s. They have that sound down pat. Also comes in a gatefold jacket, should probably show you that. Uh, full lyrics, picture of the band, and of course, the track listings. Vinyl variant for this one is yellow, limited to 300 copies. There you go. 
favorites, of course. Uh, I really love Anthem for America. It's also the, pretty much the hit on this album. Uh, I love Street Lethal. I love Caught Between the Rock and Roll. Three great tracks. There are videos. Uh, there's one for Rise Above. There's one for Anthem for America. And there is one for Reach Out. There's also a cool instrumental on here called Final Fury. It's a decent melodic mid paced track. I would highly recommend that one as well. Of course, the videos I mentioned, you can find those at the Frontiers Music YouTube channel. Of course. So Crazy Lex certainly has no shame in indulging in the fun and ridiculousness of the hair metal era. Um, I don't either. You know, I don't have any shame in that regard. I don't have any shame, period. So I definitely dig this album. If you're looking for something that's sort of in tone musically to bands like Steel Panther, they, they are obviously the most well-known of the revival bands, I think you'll like this. Uh, minus the filthy lyrics, obviously Steel Panther's lyrics go a little bit into the lurid. Uh, Crazy Lyrics, not as much. But I think you'll dig it. You should definitely give it a chance. Um, I should mention my favorite album from this band is the 2017 release of Rough Justice. This album is becoming a contender, though, for that album. I, I think with repeated spins, I'm probably going to like this one as much as that one, but we'll see. And that's it for another episode of Vinyl Hall. Remember, if you like this video, give it one of these. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Share this video with some of your vinyl-loving friends. This is the Accusation Network. I do metal vinyl collecting videos each and every week. I also do videos on classic and modern metal in general. That sounds of interest. Go through the channel, check out the playlists. Think you'll find something pretty cool. I'm willing to bet on it. Of course, let me know in the comments if you like some of these bands, hate some of these bands, like some of these albums, hate some of these albums. Any of that stuff. Let me know in the comments. Also, if you have music suggestions for me, maybe I reminded you of some other band you like or another release from the same band. Love to hear about all of that. Your input is hugely appreciated. And of course, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.